Hi, I'm Netgear57 with Collector Car Feed, and this is the cold, hard truth of buying a 240SX. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. 90% of the cars you see are not worth buying. Maybe even 95%. They're pieces of sh**. All right, so you've seen Donuts or Fitment Industries videos about 240s, getting you up to speed, showing you what you need to know so you know you want to buy a 240, and now you're an S-Chassis expert. You know everything about 240SXs because of these two videos you watched, and they blew so much sunshine up your ass that you've been shitting rainbows for a week. Well, guess what, ass? I'm here to give you a dose of reality. If you're 16, 20, 21, 22, 23 years old, you've never had a 240 in your life, it's going to be the absolute worst car purchase you will ever make in your life. Now, I know I'm gonna make a whole lot of people angry with this, absolutely furious, but understand I'm gonna be speaking here in kind of broad generalizations, broad strokes. If you're one of the good buyers, cool, don't worry about it, ignore this. But if you're one of those brain dead TikTokers, talking to you. Go ahead and bitch about me on TikTok about how I didn't respect all builds. Go ahead and tag Collector Car Feed in it. Now, the worst pitfalls that a new 240SX buyer can fall into are going to be lack of experience, community burnout, the cheap car fallacy, and then clout chasing. Now, if, if you want your 240 ownership to be as pleasant as possible, try your best to mitigate these factors. All right, so let's start with lack of experience. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, uh, you can't do that, Ned. That's gatekeeping. You have to buy the car to get experience. And you know, I might give you that argument. That is a good point that you make. But a lot of you motherfuckers have never lurked. And it shows. You have to lurk. If you're serious about buying one of these cars, you're gonna do the research. You have to do your due diligence and find out everything you can about these cars to stop yourself from making a wrong purchase, an incorrect decision, something that's going to sit in a driveway and not do anything for the rest of its life. Lack of experience is the main reason why dudes that join the army buy V6 Challengers and marry a stripper. They don't know any better. And that's why kids go out and buy Shell 240s that are never going to run again and think, oh, I'm the next Drift King. You don't have to buy the first thing that comes up on Facebook Marketplace. You have to be honest with yourself. Is a kid that has little to no knowledge in both 240s and in simply working on cars going to be able to take a shell, put it together, piece together a single cam KA that's torn apart, doesn't know anything about it, and get that thing running? Let's be real here. You gotta be honest with yourself. There's a great YouTube video by the YouTuber Auto Shop Dreams. Great video about what to look for in Rust. Because these these things, they'll rust like a motherfucker. People that know about 240s, they know they have a piece of shit car and they want to give it to an idiot kid that just wants a 240 and just wants an S13 that doesn't know any better, so they get rid of it. But they know these unscrupulous sellers, they know that, that it's not a good car. So watch that video. Uh, we'll link it down in the description. Watch it after this video. Don't watch it right now. But that's a great video that shows you what to look for in Rust. All right, next, let's talk about community burnout. The 240SX community is probably the absolute worst community community of people that you'll ever run across in any automotive circle. It's basically made up of a bunch of, of angry, older fucking dudes that are living in the past. They can't fathom that this car that they loved when they were younger and was cheap, it's rising in value and now they're worth something and they're just living in the past. 240s are not worth that that's a $2,000 car all day. Okay, dude, if that's a $2,000 car all day, how about you sell me your 240 for $2,000? You're not, because you know that you're never ever gonna find another one like that again. They're just being assholes, it's stupid. And the other half of the community is fucking dumbass kids that are just straight up idiots, dumbass TikTok kids that don't know shit about anything. And all they do is clog up Facebook 240 groups. How much stance can I put on my 240SX before it rubbed. Um, what oil is best for stance? Is NRG a good stance brand? Like, motherfucker, all this shit has been asked and answered and since the beginning of time. Do a little bit of research. Now look, there's cool older dudes and there's cool younger dudes, but those two groups are probably what make up the most of 240 ownership. It's very easy to become jaded in the community and you end up hating this fucking purchase that you made because everyone just makes fun of you and clowns you, or maybe you're the asshole doing the clowning. But remember, you have to be the change that you want to see in the community. If you don't want people to, to sh** on newbies, don't be the newbie that's asking dumb questions that have been answered since day one. What is a tire? Motherfucker, 
You know what a tire is. Look it up on Google. Go to Zilvia. I know Zilvia's down a lot, but there's a lot of stuff you can answer on your own just by Googling. You have so much knowledge at your fingertips, but you don't use it. And that's what makes the older dudes mad. But on the other side of the coin, the older dudes are shitting on people, gatekeeping, not like I'm doing, but they're gatekeeping saying, oh no, no, dude, if you weren't driving an S13 when you came out of your mama's you know, you ain't shit. No, f that dude. Be the change you want to see. Don't be a dumb fucking noob. Don't be a fucking asshole older guy. Because the only way that the community is going to keep growing is if the older generation teaches the younger generation. It's happening right now with early Fords. All the early Ford guys are not passing their knowledge down to anybody. So that's going away. And that's why early Fords, the values are dropping. Okay, cheap car fallacy. Now, in my opinion, the cheap car fallacy, that's probably what most new 240 owners are going to fall into. Especially if you're a kid, you don't have a lot of money. The cheap car fallacy is basically this idea that, oh, you know, I, I can't afford an ISS 13. I'll never, oh God, they're 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 so expensive now. You know, ten, twelve thousand dollars, fourteen thousand dollars. Hell, you watch this in a year from now, it might be even fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. But anyway, they think, oh, I can't, I can't afford that. I can't afford a nice one. Oh, but look, hey, two thousand dollars for a shell, no interior, completely stripped. Oh, I can put anything I want in it. That's a deal. I can get that and build it. Wrong, motherfucker. Buying a hacked piece of shit garbage 240 is the worst decision you can make for the price of getting a piece of sh shell to presentable running decent condition you're not embarrassed to take it to the car meet nine times out of ten it's it's gonna cost you more than if you would have just bought the nice 240 to begin with even more so if you're trying to make something like a sylvia clone or the most memed to fucking death still 80 a lot of parts on these cars they're super hard to find now nissan's discontinuing them no one's making them it's not like a 69 camaro where you can get a re pop fender no one is making repop sylvia fenders well i take that back they're making garbage trash wide body with a fucking vent sylvia fenders those do not look good don't buy them and then especially with the interior a lot of the cars you see they're completely metal on the inside nothing in there because back in 2008 some fucking racer realized that the seven pounds of interior plastic inside that's what was holding this car back oh that's a thing that was that was keeping him from running tens in the quarter mile and his interior plastic now because this really isn't something that new car buyers take into consideration you kind of see this endless cycle of shit car dude buys it oh i'm gonna fix it up realizes that he's never gonna fix it up and then sells it to the next asshole and it's it's just an endless waltz buy nothing sell the three beats beating over and over for eternity buying a cheap car will almost always cost you more money in the long run now i'm not saying that it's impossible but for a new buyer it's extremely extremely unlikely to get a piece of shit 240 back on the road you need to know these cars inside and out you have to know how to work on them you got to know how to weld and you got to have a fucking stash of a bunch of parts that you've been stacking for years to get something from shell to street and do it in a manner that won't cost you more than just buying a good streetable car in the first place you start looking up on facebook marketplace looking on craigslist you change your fucking tiktok handle to to hentai kohai you buy 240 shell make your fucking tiktok TikTok video and you're announcing to the world that famous word soon you jump onto injuku racing.com look at everything you can buy oh man this is gonna be the sickest car look at all this this isr shit i can buy you look at all the sick mods that you can't wait to do to your non-running no engine on fucking jack stands no interior no glass japanese pile of fucking rust accelerant in your front yard instead of trying to figure out oh and where can i get a new engine man i should probably put some suspension in this car anything absolutely anything to get this car back on the road Road, running correctly what do you do hmm. I'm gonna get this NRG quick release steering wheel. That's what TikTok will like. And then you go to Fitment Industries and then you drool over a set of Vores TR37s. All right, hey, time to go back to school. Your financial aid check comes in and finally you can get that wide body kit that you've been eyeing on jpfiberglass.com. It comes in and it's everything you ever hoped for. It fits like shit. Your car doesn't run and you fucking masking tape it to mock it up. Take some pictures, announce to the world your proclamation soon. All right, Christmas comes around now. Santa hasn't quite made your car run yet, but he did bring you a hydraulic e-brake. That's what you need. For Valentine's Day, you buy one of those 
fucking subway handle things that people hang from the rear bumper in a heart shape. You tag your girlfriend, JDM Princess, on Instagram, telling her, can't wait to be driving in this car with you in the front seat soon. All right, so school year's nearly over. It's time to get buckled down for your next project. Big project over the summer. You finally do it, and you pull the trigger on a set of Vores TR37s, only $70 on a firm, wrapped in a set of Ling Long tires. The latest. You don't have a jack, so all you can do really is place the wheels over your stock wheels right now, and then take a picture. Excited, you know? You go onto the fucking Facebook groups, put the photos up, hashtag soon. All right, so you might think I'm being a fucking asshole. You know, and I kind of am, but am I that far off? This fucking happens every day. It's all the fucking time. Do not waste your money on garbage shit. So that way you can LARP as a drifter when your fucking 240 doesn't even run. If I can stop one idiot from making a mistake and buying a 240 that's going to be a pile of shit and just waste its money, or hell, maybe I can stop somebody from just ruining a 240 and putting stupid clout chaser, quick release steering wheel, hydro e-brake, fucking dumb shit, ISR crap garbage. One person, save one person or save one 240, I'll call this video a win. All right, I'm going to blow a little bit of sunshine up your ass. It can be hard on a 240. It's a tough road, but it can also be very, very rewarding if you buy the right one. People bitch and moan all day about how 240s are unreliable. It's always going to be broken. You're always going to be fixing something. No, f that. Buy the right one, keep it stock, and it'll be fine. I used to deliver pizza in an S13. S13 coupe. I did it for fucking years. I know all I ever had to change was, was a water pump. I think they were at around 160,000 miles. And the radiator, I think, cracked one time. That's it. I drove that car from 150, I think I bought it with to 200,000 miles when I sold it. No issues. AC worked. Great car. I daily drive a 92 SE Coupe right now. And all the work I've done to it is preventative maintenance or just unfucking something that the previous owner did. The previous owner only had it, well, there was a couple previous owners, but they only had it for a little bit and I still had to unfuck it. But still, it's just preventative maintenance. It's my daily driver. Now, I know this next statement is going to be kind of controversial. Going to piss people off. Keep your car stop. You're not a fucking drifter, so just stop. Get some help. Leave the car alone and just enjoy it as it is. As y'all are going to be destroying me down there in the comments, I'll leave you guys with this. Stop buying fucking shells. I'm Netgear57. Don't forget to visit CollectorCarFeed.com. Join the Discord. We f*** right in there all day. Like, subscribe, or if you're mad, get mad at me in the comments.